So this is the iPhone 11 and it's running the iOS 18 beta 2. At the end of this video, you're going to find out if this is worth downloading just yet on iOS 18 beta 2. Okay, so we were running the iOS 18 beta 2 on the right, which is a 15 Pro, and you can see I'm on the same version now for the iPhone 11 at 22A5297F. So definitely on the same version, you could tell because the App Store icon over there has been updated to reflect the proper dark mode there on the iPhone 15 Pro. So over here for the 11, let's begin by talking about the icon changes uh, and customization because I ran into a bug so far um, where when you're changing between these modes, sometimes they don't properly, you know, go to where they're supposed to go. They'll turn all white like this. And there's this thing in iOS 18 beta two that's been occurring where all the icons are actually going to stay that way unless you uh, either resize them, restart the phone or switch it off a specific tint or dark or light mode. So. I've been dealing with that here. Not everyone's gonna encounter the same exact bug, so you might not be dealing with that, but you can get it out of there by going like so. Um, so that is something I ran into. However, one thing I wanna note is that the stability has gotten better here for iOS 18 beta 2, especially on the older iPhone 11 right here. It feels more stable than the first version. Scrolling through the pages though, um, it is a little bit slower looking than I'm used to. Although the 60 hertz is obvious, that's pretty obvious on most 60 hertz iPhones. Um, it just doesn't look as smooth as it could be, but it's not bad. It's definitely feeling a little bit better than beta one. Um, one con I've been noticing though with the iPhone 11 here on beta two is it's been getting warmer than it did in beta one for me. Now you might have an iPhone 11 and feel a little bit different about this, but in this area, I could, if I could draw an invisible square, it would be right here and it kind of is getting uncomfortably warm. I'm also noticing that the battery life is draining a little bit faster here on beta two for the iPhone 11. That's just something I've been noticing throughout this past experience, um, trying this out over the past couple days. Okay, so here was the download space for my iPhone 11. It was 6.16 gigabytes, so nearing seven gigs. Um, and this is coming from beta one. I actually had to delete more stuff off this phone because I'm only on the 64 gig and it, it kept failing. It kept saying, you don't got enough storage. You don't got enough storage. And then it was weird because I did clear up. It said I needed 15 gigs. I cleared up 15 gigs and it still wouldn't let me download. So I actually had to clear up around 20 to get this to download. So you need quite a bit of space to be um, running these, these early on betas on the phone. So definitely make sure that you clear out enough space to download your beta two here for the iPhone 11 if you're gonna be running this developer beta. All right, so let's go ahead and check some of the performance here. I wanna go through each customization toggle just to see if anything gives me an issue. So nothing there. Let's go into dark. So we'll go into the light mode and let's scroll through and see if everything is running smoothly. So usually what happens is I'll make the video, I swear, I kid you not, I will make this video, everything will run smooth. The minute I start running this throughout my day, I will run into the funniest bug or something like this right here. This is exactly what I was talking about, how it won't stay put. Now to get this problem out of here, if you're dealing with this for beta two is go ahead, hit edit, customize, go to large icons, bring them back down to small and that usually fixes it. Also, you can go ahead and restart the phone. That will fix it sometimes. Um, but you might wanna just leave these in either just a dark mode or a light mode because that switch I think is what's causing the bug. Um, so do keep that in mind. So that's something that's going on with beta two. Some people had that issue with beta one. I personally did not have a major issue with that in beta one. So this has been an issue for me here in two. Um, but in terms of tinting, that stuff still works, but you'll probably get the same issue right here um, where they don't always turn. That time they did. Um, so tinting working just fine but sometimes you'll get that issue. Funny thing is I, I have actually seen those white icons even on iPad OS 17.5.1, which is kind of weird, but you can make those large and you could see, give it a second. I noticed with the iPhone 11, it takes a second for it to transition a little bit more than say on, you know, if iPhone 15 pro, it's a little bit slower there, but generally speaking, scrolling through, 
this OS here for the 11, it's looking like once they polish this out, it's going to be a pretty good experience, even on the older ones. So I think that um, Apple knows what they're doing in terms of bringing at least the iOS 18, but not bringing the Apple intelligence to bog this phone down. Um, while that is annoying, some people are going to want to run that on any phone. You know, older phones like the 11 are still going to have a pretty good experience here on iOS 18. You could probably just download a chat GPT or Copilot app if you want to play around with AI, stuff like that. All right, so let's go ahead and bring in a widget here. Um, we'll bring in the batteries widget. That one is resizable, and we'll see how that works. You've seen right there, it kind of like flew out into the notch. Um, seeming to work okay, though. Let's go ahead and bring it over like that. A little bit of a delay, a little choppy there, but definitely shows. I feel like it's it's going to look a little smoother than this as we get closer on. It'll probably look more like that. You see how smooth that was right there, that transition? Um, but seeming to work fine here. Let me know if you're having any widget crashes. That would be interesting to hear on your beta editions. You've seen how it took just a second there, so just a little bit slow to go ahead and react to that. Um, but definitely, yeah, that's that's working okay, the widget performance. All right, so let's go through some settings here just to see if everything's working fine in here. A little bit slow to respond to my tap there, but it's looking like everything is fine in here. App Store settings looking pretty good. Let's go into apps. This is a new section right here, which I'm very happy they put. You can see those little white changes to the icon where it's like trying to show the image of the icon. Still a little slow there, but generally it looks like everything is working okay here within settings. So settings is not an issue. Screen time has been an issue for me on the 15 Pro. Um, some people are saying it's not syncing on their beta version, so that could be an issue for you as well. Um, but overall, settings seems to work generally okay. All right, so let's pop in through some applications to see how the actual performance of the system is running with opening up applications. So you can see, I was actually pretty impressed that, you know, I, I was thinking about this iPhone 11. I was like, this iPhone 11, even though it's from 2019, bro, it still feels like a really nice phone, even though it's like worth nothing at these this point in time. It has a nice thick aluminum on the on the sides. It performs pretty okay, and it just doesn't feel like a cheapy phone. It feels pretty nice uh, for this how long it's been out. And I love that it still has LCD. Um, the last LCD iPhone, I believe it was this one. In terms of the in terms of the like bigger iPhones, maybe they'll bring it back with an SE three. We'll have to see. But not everybody likes that classic SE design. This was the last like bigger iPhone with LCD. And a little bit of a delay, maybe a couple of seconds slower to launch these apps in a newer phone. But generally, you can still get on and get by with your day on an iPhone 11. I think if you're into speed, like really fast performance, though, you'll definitely want to upgrade because this just doesn't have it anymore. I would uh, equate this to like newer. You know how when you buy in a laptop or a PC or even a Mac, you have faster laptops that cost more and then you have slower laptops or you have slower tablets, the lower tier. This feels like a lower tier performance now versus the new stuff. Still can get the job done, don't get me wrong, basic tasks, but it's it's not high performance anymore. It used to be though, not anymore though. But if you had bought an 11 brand new and you still have it to this day, that's incredible. It, it still works pretty good, even considering it came out so many years ago in 2019. So let me go ahead and, oh, you've seen some lag there coming out. See right there? That's what I'm talking about. It can get a little bit janky sometimes here on the 11 and a little bit slow to launch speed test again. This is not the fastest phone out there. I did offload 3D Mark, so I'm not going to open that because that app was uh, stopping me from downloading the 18 beta 2. Um, due to needing more space, I had to offload that app. All right, so let's go ahead and relaunch some of these applications to see how they perform. I'm holding in the background. Now, we didn't actually finish the Temple Run, so that one's not really fair. I was talking, and I kind of came out of that too fast. But you can see a little bit slower to respond to Subway Surfers. Sometimes I need a couple more swipes, a little bit of chop right there. Sometimes I need a couple more swipes to get out of an application on the relaunch. And you can see it looks like they're pausing the apps here. Yeah, you've seen that delay right there. They're definitely pausing the apps now to appear like they're holding. 
you can see right there a little bit slow when, when i open reopen the app and i start to scroll and it gets a little bit slow you seen that like it just takes a second to respond once again a little bit of a second to respond and a reload there on app store so the four gigs of ram cannot hold too much in the background and this is clearly why um the ai cannot run on iphone 11 smoothly it's not going to run super smooth if they were to put it on here this ram would just limit it not only are you doing background intelligence, but you're also doing all your regular phone stuff. This thing would probably be a mess. Um, this particular model, I think, on Apple Intelligence. So you want to use the internet on this phone, Beta 2? I'm pretty sure you do. Let's go ahead and check it out. So we'll go to Apple.com. Of course, their website launches perfectly smooth. Let's go into Yahoo.com here. And boom, we're in pretty good. Pretty smooth there. Um, of course, content will take a little bit of time to load, depending on your internet connection. Um, pretty decent, though. Looks about like an iPhone 15. Nice little bit. Of, it's a little bit of a redesign here to the Safari, especially down here where you, you change the reader view and stuff like that. A little bit different. Go to iPhone here. And pretty good. So... Honestly, internet shouldn't be too bad. I mean, some of these tabs will probably re reload if you have like 40 of them open. They're not just going to hold in the background. This phone don't have enough RAM. But generally just scrolling through Safari, still very well optimized. You can have, you can get on with a pretty good internet experience, no problem, on the iPhone 11, on the iOS 18 beta 2. So a quick battery check. We just started this video not too long ago and we're down like 7% already. That's not too good. I can imagine you're going to drop 30, 40% in a couple hours on this phone and this beta. So I don't know how good this is going to be for battery. Let me know your experience so far. Testing the camera out here on beta 2. Still smooth going through different lenses, the portrait, each mode working okay. I've actually had the camera, like I would open it up. I'm about to take a picture and it literally just closed on me a couple of times. It doesn't happen very often, but it can occur. It's happened on the 15 Pro as well. So the camera is for the most part smooth, but it can crash sometimes on the beta. Keep that in mind. Everyone's going to have a different beta experience. That's why there's a feedback section to send to Apple. But you'll see right here, pretty good. And overall, I don't think you're going to miss too many shots. Even if you're doing a selfie, whatever video, I think you'll be able to get most of your stuff done. It's downloading this beta is not going to stop you from getting your photos and videos and things like that. Um, keep that in mind. Some people are saying they're not getting text messages received or even sent out properly um, via this beta too. So let me know the experience for you. All right. So I'm going to go ahead now and open up Geekbench and we'll look at our previous iOS 18 history. So on 18 beta one, we were at a 1726 and 3231. So that's what we're trying to beat here in this test. I'm gonna go ahead and run this and I'll be back when it's done. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like we went out on that single core score there, 1687 and 3333 on that multi. So the average iPhone 11 there is doing better than this beta two. And the average iPhone 11 is doing better than this beta two, at least on my iPhone 11. This could vary depending on your scores could be a little bit different. I was running some stuff, but you'll see, if you take a look at the multi-core score, it actually went out there in beta two. So maybe overall performance a little bit better as the multi-core tends to indicate slightly better performance usually, um, but definitely didn't do better on the single core stuff. Let's go into the 3D Mark. I'm going to go ahead and run a 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, which is about a one minute test, test the graphical performance, and we'll see what we get on here. I'll be back when it's done. All right, final score here, 10.2 FPS. Now, that's not the worst score in the world, uh, 1695, and only scoring better than 25% of iPhone 11 versus all devices. There are more than 67% of devices on the market faster than this. But you're still faster than 33%, so you're not the lowest um, performance overall. My final consensus, my final conclusion on this phone here on beta 2 is this. You will run into a few bugs. It's definitely getting a little toastier than normal. Battery is draining, I would say, 15 to 20% faster. And that doesn't mean 15 to 20% more per day. I'm saying like a little, like in terms of a percentage, about 15 to 20% faster than I would experience before. 
The phone itself running through the app seems fine. You're going to run into some of these white icons sometimes. Apps tend to crash a couple of times. Control Center tends to be a little bit laggy here. Let me go ahead and check that again here when we add controls. Especially when you're adding controls, it's a little bit laggy for sure. And things kind of stutter sometimes, more so on the 11 than they do on some of the newer iPhones. But generally, if this is your side phone, it's definitely usable to try it out for sure. Um, but I would say this, if this is your main phone, I'm noticing 18 doesn't feel as smooth as the 17 official version on any of the iPhones, but more so on the older ones, they feel even more jankier because of their older CPUs. So unless this is your side piece phone, I still recommend waiting for a few more betas or a public beta, because right now it's just okay. Um, I just feel like 17 is just running more polished right now, especially on older iPhones. But if you want to try it out, it's not going to be a major issue. Let me know your experience down below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video, want to see more iOS 18 beta 2s on other iPhones, let me know which one's down below. And I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well. And peace. <music>